morning. We are so glad that you are with us this morning. We want to welcome you to C1, and um, I will be the first to say happy Valentine's Day, Ryan, and everybody else. <laughs> Um, but it is, uh, it is almost Valentine's Day, so happy Valentine's Day. And um, my little boy has been passing out Valentine's cards to all his teachers, so he's probably the favorite right now because um, he's just so cute with his little dinosaur cards. Um, but we just want to welcome you. If you are a guest with us this morning, I'm Amy. My husband, Ryan, and I, we are the lead pastors. If you um, have not filled out a Connect card, you can do so online or you can do it here in front of you. And maybe you have, um, you moved or you need to update your address, please do so as well. And um, we just want to remind you that next week after service um, and after lunch will be our annual business meeting. And um, if you are a voting member here at C1, we ask you to attend. And it's, uh, hopefully we'll just be a very quick meeting and uh, we won't take up much of your time, but we want to remind you of that. And also, we are so, so excited about life groups. Um, some of the life groups have already kicked off this week, and so we um, we just we love life groups because one of our core values here at C1 is we live in community because we believe that when you are surrounded by people, then you have a team around you to help you go through life and to help you face those challenges. And so, um, if you are interested in a life group, it is not too late. We are on our first week, and some of the life groups haven't even met our. Life Life group meets this afternoon, and so if you um, would like to join a life group, there is a little black table out there with all of the life group signups, and we would encourage you to please do so today, and um, we will contact you and give you the information for that. But we love life groups, and we just encourage you to um, be a part of one because it is it is an amazing time, and um, and usually there's food at them, but sometimes there's not, so you can't say no to food, right? So um, well, we are right now we are going to. Um, enter into a time of worship to uh, to just thank the Lord for what He's done and who He is. So, let's we're, as we pray, let's stand if you feel comfortable with standing. If not, that's fine. But let's invite the Lord here because He's here. He wants to speak to us, and He has things for us today. God, we thank you for who you are. God, you are so so good, and you are so faithful. Lord, we thank you for the for the never-ending love that you have for us. God, we thank you that you are here to speak to us. Lord, we thank you that, that you are a God that loves us, that cares for us, that sees us, that meets us. And Lord, I pray right now that your presence would be here and that we would be able to feel you today, God, and that you would tug on our heart today, that when we leave, we would leave changed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. This is no performance, Lord, I praise, worship, empty words I can't afford. I'm not chasing feelings, that's not why I'm singing, you're the reason for my song. I only want to sing If I sing with everything If I sing for you, my King Oh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for hype Cause it's all to lift you high
only want to see if I see with everything if I sing for you my King oh, I can't imagine why I would do this all for high cause this all to live you high Yeah, crown him with 
generations in your family and your children and their children and their children may his favor be upon you in a thousand generations in your family in your children and their children may his presence may his presence go before you and behind you and beside you all around you and within you he is with you he is with you in the morning in the evening in your coming in your going in your weeping and rejoicing he is for you 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 he is for you, yeah, amen. 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 lost, processing things that they don't necessarily understand. I pray, Father, that that you will manifest near to them. Lord, that, you, that, that just as you've shown up, as you inhabit the praises of your people, you are here. I pray that you tear down walls around, around people's hearts. And, and Lord, help us to lay down any baggage or preconceived notions that we might have about church or about you and just Help us to receive from a Father who loves us endlessly, limitlessly. Help us to receive from God Almighty and experience your love. 
your grace. Lord, I, I just thank you for what you've done. I thank you for what you're doing. I thank you for what you're going to do. Lord, I, I ask that you will empower me to speak your word with grace and anointing. Lord, your church doesn't need to hear me. They need to hear from you. If I just talk, I'm going to convey information. But if you talk, you can change lives. And Lord, so I lay myself down right here before you. And I say, Lord, don't let me talk. I need you. I need you to speak through me. In the name of Jesus, I pray and ask these things. Amen. be seated. You almost got a well out of me. Well. Good morning. Good morning. It's, it is a good morning. It's always a good morning when the church comes together to worship God Almighty it's always a good morning when like, we, we celebrate Jesus, we live in community, we share our story here at C1, and we make a difference. And, and I love celebrating Jesus corporately with you guys. It's a highlight. It's also a good morning. It's also a good morning when we have a missionary in our presence. We have one of our own missionaries. Yay! That's always a good morning. If you have not met, and I'm so sorry, I'm just going to be honest. I went completely blank on your first name. Rhonda. Rhonda. I was going to say Linda. I'm like, that's wrong. I know it's wrong. I Please forgive me. I will admit, I'm, I, I have no, I, I make no apologies except when I make apologies. And so I'm so sorry. But if you have not met Rhonda, please go uh, talk with her um, She's one of the missionaries we support, and we're so honored to have her in our presence. She's making a difference around the world where we make a difference here, but we can't go everywhere she can go, but she's making a difference. So, guys, today we're going to continue in a series called Limitless, and um, we're going to wrap it up today, I think. I've been thinking I should wrap it up, but then God extends it. So it was supposed to be a three-week series. I want you to understand that. And we're in week five of a three-week series. And so um, I'm really leaning into my giftings and making stuff go longer than what it should. <laughs> but that's not going to be today because I know it's, is it, is it Super Bowl Sunday today? Okay. Who's in the Super Bowl again? Not Tom Brady. Not, Tom Brady. <laughs> not the Kansas City Chiefs. Not the Tennessee Titans either. Oh, it's too soon. Oh. Everyone just tuned me out. They're like, we're leaving. Never be back to this church. Pastor doesn't even watch football. I watch football, guys, because I love the snacks that come with football. <laughs> come on. But I think it would be a shame to be walking through this series and hit on some really important things. We launched it with Embrace the Lonely Place. And, and so often when we go through seasons of loneliness, we despise them. But if we learn to embrace them, we can actually grow in our understanding of God, grow in our relationship with God, and we can actually see the power of God work in us. And, and it's in the lonely place that God can communicate to us in a way that he can't communicate any other time. It's almost like the lonely places in life remove earplugs to where we can hear more precisely if we learn to embrace it. So we launched with that, and then we, and then we talked about limitless faith, about like... Really, walking in faith is taking what little we have, bringing it to God, letting him bless it, break it, and multiply it, then do what he says. It really is so simple. Bring what you have to God, and then do what he says. 
And we, we complicate faith a lot, don't we? We think, we think it's uh, grand gestures, and it's not. It's just like, God, this is what I have, and that's enough for God to work miracles through. And then we talked about God's limitless wisdom. And, and what, what God's wisdom, we, we, we often pray, Lord, give people wisdom. But really what wisdom is, from God's perspective, is being like Jesus in every circumstance. So if you want to walk in wisdom, choose to act like Christ. I once heard this statement, act like Christ would act until the act is no longer an act. Yeah. Or as a younger generation would say, fake it till you make it. But that's not the same thing. You choose to act like Christ would act. That means when people are ticking you off at work, at your job, whatever, I'm going to act like Christ. I'm going to love them like Christ would love. And that's actually operating in wisdom. That's operating in wisdom. We, we think wisdom is decision-making power, but that that's really has nothing to do with that. I think when you act like Christ would act, when you act as Christ would act by, by God's word standard, then you will make decisions that are wise. You're not going to make stupid decisions because you're acting like Christ would act. Then, then last week, Pastor Nathan, he hit on limitless grace, and he used this beautiful illustration of a reservoir. And a reservoir, it, 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 we, we are a reservoir of God's grace because he pours it in, but at the same time, if a reservoir doesn't release grace, it will burst. And... and Pastor Nathan gave this beautiful example of how the church, the practicals is we got to release grace to people. God pours out his grace, and grace is a churchy word, um, and it's not just a name that we give our kids. Um, it, it, It just means unmerited or unearned love or favor. So you can't earn God's love. That's why it's called grace. God freely gives it. It's unearned love. And because we can't earn it, we have to freely give it. We have to be conduit. And, and this week, I, I want to hit on something because we only we hit on such a limited number of things in this series. And, and it's, it's a series called Limitless, but this series could literally go on limitlessly because not only does God want to move in those areas, I think those are key areas to walking out, but there's, he's a God of limitless redemption. He's a God of limitless provision. He's a God of limitless mercy. He's a God of limitless power. He's a God of limitless hope. He's a God of limitless life. He's a God of limitless opportunities. We could, we could do a message on any one of those. And we're not. But I want to give you something today that's a tangible of how to walk in every one of those areas. And, and, and th- that's not even, th- that's a limited list. Because God is a limitless God. And so w- as we walk, God wants to mature us and grow us forever. Even when we get to heaven, we are still going to be growing in our knowledge and grace of who God is because he's limitless. If we spend a million years at Jesus' feet worshiping him and just learning from him, What's a million years in the scope of eternity? A vapor. It's, gone, it's here for a moment, then gone. And he, since he's limitless, we will never exhaust our ability to learn him. And God wants to mature us in our understanding of who he is even now. And so today, I, I want to hit on this idea of a limitless God and what he wants to do in us. So I'm going, to get, I'm going to do something a little different. I'm going to give you my first thought. I only have two thoughts, so we should be out of here by 3.30. Plenty of time for the Super Bowl. I'm just joking. It'll be 4.30. Um, limitless, my first thought is limitless growth. So God wants to mature you your whole life. Just like when an infant is born, a baby is born, they grow and grow, and, and you have, they have to mature. Like, 
You don't want, you don't want to meet a 16-year-old that thinks like a 5-year-old. They, they, they have to mature their whole life, correct? Except the difference is we get to about 18 or 20 years old, somewhere in there, and we quit growing physically, so we've reached maturity in our physical bodies, but spiritual maturity never stops. So if you think that you're already spiritual, spiritually mature, you might be maturing, you might be more mature than others, but you shouldn't compare yourself to others. Um, but if you're thinking, I'm, I'm, I'm already there, I got a pretty good understanding, a good handle, that's proof that you need to mature more. That's proof that you are not actually that mature. If you think that you're already where you need to be in God, I, I already know. I, like, it, it, spiritual maturity is not about length of time, and it's not about scriptures memorized. It's not, and it never will be. Now, the second, the second point there, scriptures memorized out of the Bible, might help you mature in your understanding and in your relationship with God and actually make you mature and wise. But if you're not internalizing them and processing them and chewing on them, then you're not going to mature. I know a lot of atheists that have memorized large portions of scripture, probably more than I know and more than you know, and they're still atheists. Because it's a work of the Holy Spirit that brings about maturity. And so I want to read... I want to read something to you. Limitless growth that God wants to work in us has everything to do with our ability to yield and trust the Holy Spirit. Has nothing to do with our knowledge, has nothing to do with the, the, the number of scriptures or the amount of time we pray. That, does that stuff help Yes, but I would, I would say this, that that's actually more of an overflow. Your time in the word of God and prayer time with God is more of an overflow of yielding to the Holy Spirit than trying to yield to the Holy Spirit. It's, it's, it's an overflow of something. So limitless growth that God wants to work in us has everything to do with our ability to yield to the Holy Spirit and trust him. So we're going to read... Um, Ephesians chapter 3, 14 through 21. And the Apostle Paul, he wrote this book when he was in prison. And he's trying to minister to a church that he, he's, tr he's trying to give them how-tos. And Ephesians is a really beautiful book because he kind of hits on everything. But he says, when I think of all this, I fall to my knees and pray to the Father the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. I pray, and I want you to get this, I pray that from his glorious unlimited, or some might say limitless, resources, he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. So how are we empowered with inner strength? Through his spirit. It's the work of the Holy Spirit. This is maturity. And so, then, then he says this, and, 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 I, and I want you to see this. Then Christ. So as we yield, and I, I'm, I'm going to do some stuff different. I'm going to explain things as we go. But as we yield to the Holy Spirit, he says, I pray that that." From his glorious and limited resources that he will empower you with inner strength through his spirit. So as we yield to the Holy Spirit that he is empowering us, it says then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. As you trust him. Let's keep going. Your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. And may you have the power. So he's still praying. And he's like, I pray that you may have the power to understand, all, as all God's people should, how wide, how long, how high, and how deep his love is. 
May you experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. So Paul, he is praying a prayer that he knows that's an impossible prayer to pray, but he still prays it. He's praying that they mature and that they're empowered by the Holy Spirit, that, that they yield to the power of the Holy Spirit. Then once we yield to the Spirit, we're, we're empowered by the Spirit, then the Holy Spirit, um, then, then Jesus makes his home in our hearts as we trust him. And then he prays that our roots grow down deep into the love of God. And then he says, I pray that you understand how wide, how deep, how long, how high the love of God is, though it's too great to understand fully. We can't understand God's love, but it doesn't, he's saying, even though you can't truly understand how wide, how deep, how great, you still need to try to understand. You need, you need to grab a hold of this. And, and we're going to get to it here in a second. Then you will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that comes from God. Some of us are trying to be made complete with other things in our life. We are looking to other things to fulfill us. Christians do this all the time. We get bored and we look to stuff. We, or we stress eat. Or we, I don't know, what else? We, go, we, we look to other things for comfort, but the very thing that we're looking for is found here then you will be made complete with all fullness of life and power that comes from God. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us. Glory to him in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever. Amen. So, this, there is a cascade here of spiritual growth that we need to grab a hold of, that we need to wrap our brains around and we need to submit to. And the cascade kind of looks like this. Our ability to trust Jesus fully dictates his level of occupancy in our lives. So he starts off with this, I pray that you're empowered by the Holy Spirit to. Like it's, it's this empowering, this submission to the Holy Spirit. And then he says, then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust him. So what limits our growth in God is our trust of Christ. That's what Paul says. The level at which Christ fills at home in you is based on your trusting of him. So our ability to trust Jesus fully dictates his level of occupancy in our life. What, what, what does it mean to occupy? To go in and take hold of. Look no for, further than Ottawa, Canada. There is a bunch of freedom truck, truckers that are occupying a city. They're occupying. They're, they're laying hold of. And actually, the Bible tells his church to occupy till he comes. We're not supposed to retreat. We're not supposed to run away. And Jesus wants to occupy our lives completely. But is, it, it, the first step is our trust. We, we got to trust him. His level, his level of occupancy in our lives dictates what we're supposed to grow through. So as we allow and we trust in him, what, what did Paul say? He says... Then Christ will make his home in your hearts as you trust in him. Your roots, will, your roots will grow down into God's love and keep you strong. So his level of occupancy in our lives dictates what we are supposed to grow through. So sometimes we, we get this idea that God wants to mature us in all these things, but Paul actually says it's really one thing. And, and that one thing is 
this, this next cascade. We grow through our understanding of his love. So you want to mature and you want, God wants to develop limitless growth in you. It starts with yielding to the Holy Spirit, trusting Christ completely, allowing him to occupy you fully, and then you'll understand his love. We grow in our understanding. We mature in our understanding of his love. And I find that the closer you get to Jesus in your pursuit of him and your trusting him and all these things, when life hits you with something, when life hits you with something, it either knocks you to your knees and you pursue God more, and you understand that he's so good because you have a because he's cultivated this love. He's he's helped you understand this love that he's he's been developing in you. Or if 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 you're not allowing God and you're not fully trusting in Jesus when life hits you with something, maybe you lost a job, maybe you lost a loved one, maybe you lost whatever, and it hits you and smacks you with that, it can have the tendency to actually knock you away from God. It, it could push you further because you start asking questions of, God, why would you let that happen? How would you let that happen? And it's because there hasn't been a submission to this love that God wants to cultivate in you. Because when you understand how deep, how wide, how, and, and Paul says, as every believer should, then you understand that bad things happen but it's not God's fault. And in fact, it's only by his grace that you're going to make it through that season. And so, <laughs> the scripture that says, then Christ will make his home in your heart as you trust him, it makes me think about my grandma's home. And so when, what, what does a person that makes himself at home, what do they do? I mean, Andy, I'm going to ask you because you are like the king at this. He really is. He makes himself at home, and that's awesome. I, I love it. I love it. Um, so, but when you come into my house, you, you, you have no reservations about like walking to the fridge and opening it. Yeah, it's be, wh wh why? It's, it's because you're my friend and, and because you're, you're like my brother. The other day, I um, was lazy and I didn't take a shower all day and I'm, I'm writing myself out like, oh, our pastor's so disgusting. Oh my goodness. And um, I, I just got caught up and, and I just didn't and I was like, I need to take a shower. <laughs> I don't need to be a hobo. And I went, I, I, I literally went and took a shower. It was like 4.30 at night. I was that guy. Um, I'm, I, I have standards, guys. I was not going to go to bed without a shower. And next thing I heard was Andy in my bedroom. And he's like, hey, man, what's up? <laughs> and I was like, but, but that's what God wants to do. I, I know that sounds kind of creepy. But God wants to have that level of familiarity with you. Because what's the base word of familiarity? Family. With you that he sees your dirty laundry and he's okay with it. Because guess what? He wants to help you fold it. But my grandma's house, she had this front room and then she had a living room. And so the front room had this big window that as you walked up on the front patio, and this is in California, but you could look into the front room, and like that room was, I mean, spick and span. Um, that's a good old-fashioned term for you. But it was so clean to the point where her couches had that like fitted plastic over them. I don't know if she just didn't take it off or if she bought that extra 
but it was so clean. And like, so when, when people would just pop by, she was like, oh, come on in. And she would invite them into the front room because when you walked through the front door, there was this area and there was a hallway down this way, had doors and it was clean. And then there was a front room with a fireplace and couches. And then, then, then you go through another door and, and there was a kitchen and a living room. But she had no hesitation inviting people in. It's like, oh, come on in, you know, and she would sit down on those spick and span couches that I'm pretty sure my grandma, if she would have, she would have marketed what she wiped those couches with, Clorox would be out of business. I'm t- <laughs> like, but it was so clean all the time. And, but then, then like the family, we got to walk through that other doorway and we got to go into the living room and, and. That, I mean, let, let's face it, she, she was from the generation that everything was clean all the time, but like that room was a little more disheveled. It was a little more messed up. It wasn't like everything was in its proper place. There, there was stuff. There was newspapers laying around. There, it wasn't, like she would call it a pigsty. I would call it clean to our standards. So, but, so, So often, though, what we do with Jesus is the Bible says he stands at the door and knocks. And we invite him in to the the front room. And we say, Jesus, look how clean our lives are. Please have a seat. I would love to visit with you right here. I would love to have time with you right here. Jesus, hold on, I have to go over here. And you, we just kind of leave him in the living room. We go off to our, where we actually, we, we leave him in the front room, we go off to where we actually live. But guys, Jesus is so cool. Jesus is so loving. He's so amazing that he doesn't want to stay in your living room and he's not offended by your dirty laundry. He actually, he says that he doesn't want to make himself a guest in your home. If you want to grow in your understanding, and that's why we have got to fall in love with Jesus, because he's already in love with us. And so Paul is saying, you want limitless growth in your life, then you got to be willing to fall in love with Jesus and understand that when Jesus comes in, into your home, he's not there to, for a weekend visit. He's not there. He's not there for um, just a few hours. He's not there to to just play house. He's not there as a guest in your house. He is there. God is there to make his home. But the level at which we trust him dictates how much access he has. So he makes his home as we trust him and that's why we got to understand his love because Andy understands and any of my staff they have full rights to do this they understand I love them and because I love them they have full access I prefer if he doesn't come into the bathroom while I'm showering but (laughs) they have full access to my house I like because I love them I'm not going to be offended. I can't speak for Amy. You might want to check with her. She knows where all my guns are. But (laughs) when we invite Jesus in, we, we trust people we love. So Paul is emphasizing we got to mature in our love, our understanding of his love. Then our roots will grow down into his wisdom. No, um, his awesomeness? No. His provision? No. Our roots grow down into his love. God wants to mature our understanding of his love so we trust him more. So we say, Jesus, I know you've been in my, my front room for a long time, but I really need your help back in this other room. I can't get it in order. I, I, I've been trying to, to, to put my life together back here. Everyone who looks through that front window, they think I have it all together, but I don't have it all together. I need you to come back here to this room. And Jesus is like, okay, now, now, 
You're trusting me. You're trusting me with your hurts. You're trusting me with your dirty laundry. You're trusting me with the stuff that you can't put together. You're trusting me with the stuff that you can't lay down. You're trusting me to open your fridge and see. There's stuff that's rotting in our lives. We keep it in our fridge so we don't see it. But it's rotting. And we don't take care of it. And Jesus is saying, I'll take it out for you. I don't mind doing dishes. I don't mind doing laundry. I don't mind scrubbing. I don't, I don't mind dumping out what's rotting. If you don't want to handle it, I can. My, my wife, there's this thing in every sink. It's called a drain. And it doesn't matter whether I make it dirty or just life makes it dirty. For the most part, I clean it because it's gross. And because I love my wife, I love my awesome wife, I take and dump it out. Sometimes she has to ask me multiple times because I forget, but um, I, I don't mind doing that because I love her. And it's not just her responsibility because we both live there. And that's the thing. Jesus wants to make his home in your life. He wants you to have limitless growth. And we do that by allowing him to make his home. We, we, we get him out of our, our front room and let him into the living room. We let him see. Because, you know, the front room at my grandma's house didn't have a TV in it. But the living room did. And we need to let God see what we're watching. We need to let God see what we're listening to. We need to let God see. And then he helps us. Then he helps us. And, you know, quite frankly... People who we treat like that, they're not really family. My family makes their home at my home. And Jesus wants to, to make his home in our hearts. And sometimes we think our relationship with Jesus is like an engagement. And we think that's love. No, that's, that's, that, that's the beginnings of love. I would call that more infatuation. We are not, we, we are not the fiancé of Christ. The Bible describes the church as the bride of Christ. And I personally did not know what love was. I thought I was in love with Amy when we were engaged. But I discovered what love was when we made our home together. Because love invites in to our mess. Love holds back hair during morning sickness. I know that's a gross analogy, but that's what love does. And then love cleans up afterwards. Well, the bride goes and rests because that's what love does. And because God, Jesus, is described as the bridegroom. He's our husband to the church. That's what he wants to do. And, 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 and that's what maturity looks like in him is trusting him and then grabbing a hold of how much he loves us. He doesn't address the dirty laundry because he's judging you. He's addressing the dirty laundry in your life, the, the, the gross dishes, that, that mess, because he loves you. And he knows that it's going to hold you back or hurt you. The other night, my, I heard my daughter cough in the middle of the night, and I heard this voice. It was a passing thought, was go check on your daughter. It was just like that. It was just something completely random, just like go check on your daughter. I'm like, okay. So I got up, and I just went in there and checked, and I was like, sis, what are you doing? She was sitting up sideways in her bed. I'm like, this is weird, you know? And she was completely asleep, and then she fell backwards, and then she started puking some more. And she'd been puking all over herself. And I just scooped her up, and I picked her up and got her out of her vomit. I got covered in it. It was so gross. I was like, ugh, ugh. <laughs> And I took her to the bathroom. 
But that's what love does, and that's what Jesus wants to do. As he makes his home in our life, but that's what maturity in him looks like, is not keeping him in the living room or in the front room. It's, it's letting him have full access as you trust him. Mature in your understanding of his knowledge, of his love. The second thought I want to give you real fast is limitless yes. Limitless yes. I want to read verse 20 and 21. Now all glory to God, who is able, through his mighty power at work within us, to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. I'm just going to stop there for a second. How many of you guys have read this and quoted this? It, it might sound a little different in your translation. Now It says, now all glory to God, who is able to do infinitely, immeasurably more than we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Some translations say it like that. But we want that. Whenever we start praying for big things, we want, we, this is our go-to scripture for God, you are able to do exceedingly, abundantly, and above anything we ask, think, or imagine according to the power that is at work within us. Huh. Right? That's what we do. We quote that, and it's true. God is able to do immeasurably more. But what does it say? Through his mighty power at work within us. How does he do it? Because I think that that's a misunderstanding when it comes to this verse. We think God is going to do it. And so when, as we mature in God... As we submit to trying to understand his love, there is something that if we want a limitless God to do limitless things through us, we have got to give God a limitless yes. Because how does God do immeasurably more? He says, through his mighty power at work within us. So God wants to do immeasurably more through his power at work within you. So what... Through you, God wants to do immeasurably more than you can ask, think, or imagine. Through the power that he's placed in you. Where is that power? In you. So what does that mean? We have to say yes. You want to have limitless redemption? Say yes to God. You want limitless provision? Say yes to God. And, and there is something that we got to decide right now. When God asks us to do something. You want to mature, limitless growth, limitless God. You, you want to experience this limitless God in all of everything that he provides and offers. I would say most every Christian is like, yes, I want some of that. Then pre-decide to say yes to God, whatever the question. Pre-decide. Do not put terms on your yes to God, when God says, I want you to move your family, blah, yes. I want you to, yes. Pre-decide. Whatever it looks like, just have this in mind. I just have limitless no matter what. I have an infinite number of yeses I'm going to give to God because of what he's done for me. If it does not look fun, say yes. If it looks hard, say yes. If it looks like I should do this, say yes. If it looks like I shouldn't do this, say yes. Because if God's asked you to do it, he's already made the way for you to do it. Everything you need, everything all the provision, all the power, everything you need to accomplish what God has asked of you to do is in the question that God asked you to do it. And if we want, if you want to know how we limit a limitless God, you want to know? I'll tell you. We say no. You want to limit God in your life? Tell him no. 
It's not that he's limited in his power, but he's limited in what he'll do through you. Because he won't say, he, he, he's not going to violate your will. Because he loves you that much. He loves humanity enough to not violate their will and say, everyone's going to heaven. Everyone is going to heaven. He won't do it. He says, no, it's your choice to choose that my son died on the cross for your sins and that he rose to life again for you to have life. You have to believe that. Imagine with me, this is how much God respects free will. Imagine with me that a guy says he really, 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 really loves a woman. Really loves her. And he asks this girl to marry him. And she says, no. And he even went through the, I mean, he, uh, he, he booked the, the nicest restaurant. He, he, it cost him everything to propose to this person. And he bends down, and, and, and what he offers cost him everything. And he, he, he says, will you marry me? And the, and the girl says, no. Is it love? Because this guy, this guy wants to spend the rest of his life with her. She's it. She, he, he will never love anyone else. He loves her, and, and he wants to spend forever with her. Is it love if he says, okay, I have a contingency plan. I'm going to duct tape her, throw her in the trunk, and I'm going to make her live with me. I'm going to chain her to the kitchen sink or whatever. I'm, uh, I'm going to chain her to the house, and I'm going to spend forever with her, right? That's not love. Who, what woman in here would say, oh, yeah, that's true love. That's, that's how you show love. You kidnap someone, and you make them spend forever with you. That's not love. But yet we think that God does that somehow, sometimes, especially if you go to funerals where someone's never accepted Jesus. No, God loves a person enough to say, I, it cost me everything to propose to you. And you can still say no. And he loves you enough to allow you to say no. He loves you enough to say, because true love, would that guy would say, the offer will always stand. But you can go and be free. That's what love looks like. That's what love looks like. And today, I, I think there are people here today that we haven't given God a yes. We haven't given God a yes. We've, we've given God the front room. We haven't given them all access. There might be people here today that, that God has asked you to, I'm just going to throw things out in the church, start a life group or um, jump on a team. Or um, there might be here, people here today that God's asked you to, to pray with your neighbor. And you've just like, oh, what will they think? Or, oh, God, that, that will be hard work. Just because God asked doesn't mean it's hard work. But what does he say? What does he say? I, I, I want us to get this. Through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish, who is able to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. So when God asks, just to give you a practical example, God asked me to pastor here. So what did I ask? Father, help me pastor here. I need your help. And then God's like, okay. Because I said, God, yes, I'll do it. And then God turns around and says, Yes. Yes, I'm going to do more than you can imagine. I'm going to, I'm going to. But it starts with our yes. It starts with our, our wanting to say yes to God. God won't force you to say yes, but we want, we want to see God move in our city. I don't want one person in Columbia to die and go to hell. I don't want that. So how, how does that start? It starts with me saying, yes, God, I will share my faith. God, I will, I will do what you tell me to do to empower your church. I don't care what it looks like because I love you 
And you love me, and I want to honor you with my yes. And I think it really comes down to this idea of predecide. Before God even asks, we choose, God, you can have my yes, but no exceptions. That might put you in an uncomfortable situation. It might not. But I could tell you this, that's where you see the power of God at work in you and through you is when you say yes. Is when you say yes. And so how I want to respond today is I, I, I want I want if you if you if you need prayer first and foremost, I I want to make that available. I'm gonna be up here, my wife is gonna be up here, and I would love to pray with you. If the Holy Spirit's saying, you have these passing thoughts, so, like, you know, so often, this is what the Holy Spirit sounds like. I want to give you an idea. He sounds like this. Just a passing thought. You should go get prayer. It's just like, just a passing thought. It's like, and you have to lean in to listen to it. You you, you don't, it's not loud. It's not, he's just like, hey, you should go get prayer. Or you should stand and worship. Just like, and, and you can miss it. If you're not paying attention. But some of us need prayer today. Some of us need to say, God, you can have my yes. Forgive me of telling you no. Forgive me of telling you no. And some of us, some of us need to lean in and just receive the love of God. God loves you. God loves you. Just the way you are. With all your dirty laundry with all your messed up rooms in your life, with all of it. And God wants to make his home right with you, the way you are. He's not asking you to clean before you have guests, before he comes in. Because he's not a guest. He wants to make his house, he wants to make his home in your heart. My wife and I, we clean every night, it seems like, because we have two small children. But especially before a life group comes over. We clean because we want our lives to look like we have it together, obviously. That's why. No, we just, we have guests over and we want to treat them with respect. But Jesus is like, I'm not a guest. I'm family. And I love you. And maybe some of us need to just really grab a hold of that. God loves me with all my mistakes, with everything wrong with me. God loves me. And, and as you mature in your understanding of that love, know what that love makes me want to do is, Jesus, forgive me. Forgive me of holding back m- me. Forgive me of treating you like a guest. Forgive me of these areas that I've tried to fix myself that only you can fix. And so if you're here today and you need prayer, my wife and I will be up here to pray with you. If you're here and you need to invite Jesus into your life by um, confessing your sins before him, I would love to make that introduction. It's so simple. It's Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe that you are the son of God and that you died on the cross in my place for my sin. And I believe that you raised a life again. It's so simple. But what I, what I don't want to happen in this moment of response and reflection is us just sitting there the same way we came oh, the same way we came in and thinking, oh, this message, it really wasn't for me. No, I, th- I think we just need to lean in. And I find that a good way to respond is, is to get up. Let's stand. And maybe you just need to worship God as Pastor Ben leads. But let's stand. And I also find that this makes it easier for people to respond. So I'm going to be up here as Pastor Ben leads. If you need a, if you need prayer, please come forward. If you need to give your life to Jesus, oh, invite him in to your life to make himself home. I'll be up here. If you just need to 
worship and bask in his love for you, then do that. But let's respond. Oh, the 
overwhelming, never ending, reckless love of God.